Welcome to the Foreman Coaching Channel where I teach you how to be an awesome foreman, how to get on top of the industry and stay on top of the industry. My name is Jeremy Abbott and I am your foreman coach for the next 10 minutes and I wanted to talk about uh, supply chain stuff. Everybody's been talking about how expensive everything is and and how backlogged everything is. So I own a company and I often get vendors that come in and they talk to me about, you know, whatever they're selling, generators, receptacles, all kinds of all kinds of stuff. Get Cummins, uh, Eaton, Square D, you know, all the supply houses. They come in and they talk about stuff. And one thing that is going on uh, industry-wide that I'm sure you're well aware of is, uh, number one, how expensive everything is, especially uh, simple things like PVC, <laughs> and um, how backlogged things are. They're like the uh, supply houses are just out of some things, you know, if you start talking about generators, automatic transfer switches, you know, and I'm in the electrical industry, so uh, I'm really familiar with the things in the electrical industry that are missing, but I'm sure it's the same, whether you're in plumbing or mechanical or or any of those, I mean, freaking coffee creamer. What's up with coffee creamer? Half the time I go to get coffee creamer, there's, there's none on the shelf. And yeah, I put creamer in my coffee. Don't worry about it. Maybe you drink it black because you're tough. You know, yeah, yeah. Whoa, tangent. Anyway, point being with this uh, um, impending recession, we don't have the R word uh, yet as I record this video, but it might be coming pretty soon. I think that this supply chain stuff is going to get cleaned up real fast because, like, one of the biggest things in the news is chips, right? Chip, they haven't been able to, Detroit hasn't been able to build cars for a long time because they don't have the chips to put in the car. And, um, you know, so what happens is Ford, you know, they, they start getting desperate because they, they don't have their chips. So they, like, just, they just put in a double order. They put in a triple order. They just keep ordering more, hoping that, you know, by having just more orders on the books, maybe the semicon industry will, like, elevate them so once the chips do start coming out and they receive their delivery they go strike through um, the double orders and triple orders and stuff like that so what happens is there appears to be this massive backlog and then the backlog like spontaneously vanishes actually as, as soon as there's a slowdown and I think that's gonna happen because like I was just talking to um, a supplier that came in yesterday and I was talking about a particular piece of equipment called a CT can it's a current transformer can it's got a fancy name but what it is, is it sits on the outside of a building maybe a subway or a Starbucks and it reads how much Excuse me, it reads how much power uh, that building is receiving. So it's a really common thing. It's like you need one of these current transformer cans, a CTK. You need one in every um, commercial installation in the entire United States. So, you know, you would think there'd be millions of these floating around the United States at any given moment. And But right now they're backlogged like 40 weeks, 50 weeks, you know, which... To me, it's crazy uh, because it's just a it's a it's a steel can, you know. What, what's special? Almost makes you wonder if uh, somebody's pulling levers behind the scenes. Like, did something get hard about making steel cans? But anyway, point being, there's this huge backlog. Well, it just doesn't like if we stop building, as I think it's a lot of the warehouse building, light uh, commercial and residential is coming to a grinding halt in the Northwest. It's slowing down fast and some projects are even getting canceled. We've had projects uh, in the last six months that they just pulled them because when the stock market started tanking, all the investors realized, I, I don't, I don't think we actually have any money. <laughs> and they decided they couldn't afford to have this building built. And so they just, they, they cut the funding for it. So I think what's going to happen is there's going to be tons of canceled orders and all of the stuff is going to break free in a big log jam. You know, I just uh, read on the news a couple days ago that Volvo claims uh, they have no uh, chip problem. So you're starting to see deliveries getting closer. You know, and I just heard that iPhone, um, Foxconn over there in China is delivering massive amounts of iPhones to Apple now. So the, the back order on that is coming down. So I think we're, we're getting through these supply chain interruptions you know I know there's more on the way and, and there's lots to talk about with potential supply chain interruptions I mean basically going all the way the back to the, the the fact that we're globally sourcing everything now and you know whatever country's got the lowest price on any kind of commodity or product is going to be the source and it now if there's any problem with any country that country might be the root source for some important commodity you know and and cause all kinds of problem like Ukraine 
and uh, grain, you know. Um, I fortunately don't do the grocery shopping in my family. My wife does the grocery shopping, but, you know, I ask her, like, are you seeing an increase in the price of bread or the availability of bread, you know, due to the grain issue? And it may not be as big of an issue in America, but it might be a bigger issue in places like Sri Lanka and stuff that really rely on those imports from Ukraine. Likewise, you know, chips, there's only one major chip manufacturer in America, so... Um, I know there's still going to be some supply chain disruptions that go on, you know, but I think we're a long ways past now the massive, you know, when, when, when COVID first happened, it was, everybody was really scared and didn't know what was, what was going to happen in all the countries and like dramatic action was taken right everywhere. They just shut things down, you know, and I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong. That's just, that's the actions that were taken everywhere and it really fouled up supply chains and I think the, the we're coming back around. And, you know, what? we were also, while everybody was at home, um, particularly in America anyway, I know we couldn't go on vacation or anything. So, like, money was massing up in the savings account. And so I, I was just ordering, like, whatever I wanted off Amazon, like home workout stuff, you know, or, like, you know, GPU graphics cards for my computer. So I'm going to try out crypto mining, or you know. So I'm, I'm spinning. So there was all this, you know, I'm part of the issue that was causing a lot of demand on the system to ship things. So, you know, the shipping industry and everything got tanked, but we're out of that now and people are back to buying things at stores and the entire world is treating COVID a little bit differently. It's kind of like, you know, you stay home if you're sick, but we're not shutting down the whole factory, you know? So I think we're really close to this uh, backlog getting cleaned up. Uh, In addition with just the need for stuff is going to drop with uh, this impending recession. So um, backlog getting cleaned up due to um, all the factories finally starting back up and then a massive drop in demand. So I'd be curious what you're seeing in, in your part of the woods. I'm assuming it's it's pretty similar uh, in all America uh, because of what they call arbitrage, which is where you take advantage of where something is low and somewhere else is high. So like if in Texas they had a bunch of CT cans, but in the Northwest they didn't, well, they would, you know, people who sell CT cans would realize the opportunity and buy them out from Texas. You know, there's people that are looking everywhere for these things. So I assume pretty much everywhere is in the same situation and nobody's secretly sitting on a big stash of things that are really difficult to find, you know, like breakers right now also, GFI breakers, AFI breakers and stuff. Sorry, I get this fruit fly that's just buzzing me um so let me know what you think if you think i'm right i mean it's my projection that all this backlog is going to fly it just seems ridiculous i have suppliers coming in and telling me there's a two-year wait for some stuff i mean really how can you project what's even going to happen two years from now maybe the world is going to be gone two years how do you even know what the demand is over the next two years i mean i get it they got to say something but i almost feel like they're they're like, get it now, or you'll never get it. Get your order in now. Like, I had a guy, um, I got to buy a bunch of copper for a job, a bunch of copper wire. And uh, I mentioned to him, you know, I seen copper prices are falling. I got to buy a bunch of copper wire. And he goes, oh, you got to get your order in now. And I says, why is that? And he goes, well, you just want to make sure you're going to be able to get wire. And I was like, there's no shortage of wire. And copper prices are going through the, f- they're dropping, dude. I think I'll do better three months from now. You know, he's trying to get me to lock up the order now because prices are high. Because what these guys do is they might buy supply houses. This is fuel. This is like almost everything. The capitalism at work here. Um, suppliers buy a commodity, an item, at a price. So maybe they buy copper at, you know, let's say $10 a thousand feet. I don't even know what size copper. I'm just saying a number. $10 for a thousand feet of, is that what I said? Well, let's just go with my example, $10 for 1,000 feet. Well, they have to sell it at a markup. They can't, the price of actual copper might drop to $9 per 1,000 feet, but they're sitting on inventory and they don't want to sell their inventory at a loss. So they're going to continue to sell out their inventory at those higher prices. So prices take a long time to drop for that reason. You kind of need supply houses to get depleted or gas stations to get depleted and then refuel, um, re-up on whatever they're selling at that new lower price before they can then offer that lower price to the customer for a markup. When it goes the other way, of course, prices go up really fast because if they're sitting on a ton of copper that they bought for $10 for 1,000 feet and the market price of copper went to $12, well, they can they can immediately raise it and just increase their margins, but they're not going to sell at a loss on the way down. Um, so anyway, um, supply houses, um, um, 
supply chain woes. It's my projection. Supply chain woes are going to start cleaning up in a hurry. Uh, I got to imagine, you know, six months from now, let's look back at this video and, and see how right I was. So let me know what you think. And uh, talk to you later, guys. I'm out.